Looking at you right now, I think the craziest thing is seeing your eyes move around naturally the way that they would during a conversation. <laughs> but I think that people are getting more excited as these companies kind of start to acknowledge the technology more. You've seen Ready Player One, it could happen, you never know. In the future, eye tracking can be used as a tool instead of just a visual aid. There's quite literally nothing like it in the world. VR face tracking. What seems like just a mildly interesting niche within a niche actually holds a very interesting story that's being written as we speak. It's a neat gag to show your friends, of course, but users are becoming increasingly fascinated by the deeper interactions it brings as more users get their hands on this technology. I've fallen down this rabbit hole myself, exploring the obscure world of users quietly developing the systems and hardware that companies have yet to fully tap into, purely out of passion for what it brings to their social VR experiences. Well, if you've ever played VR chat, you know the only way to make facial expressions is with hand gestures, assigning different presets of faces to different different hand poses. Although it's a bit funny to think about out of context, it's just what everyone's used to. Additionally, VRChat has its own system set up for eye movement. While intelligent enough to know to move your avatar's gaze between objects and people, it's still quite primitive and leaves otherwise compelling conversations feeling quite hollow in the facial department, which compared to physical life is a vital part of communication. So to first explore what face tracking actually brings to a conversation, I pulled my partner Thrill into VRChat for a one-on-one -on -one face tracked conversation. Pretty wild. I don't know, it's also kind of weird looking up and seeing <laughs> yeah, because you're right there. <laughs> actually, it's not that far distance away either. Yeah, it's actually very close. You're like a few inches off, maybe. Yeah. I can uh, like blow my cheeks. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, I, I can also uh, do the. <laughs> Although it looks kind of Your funny on my side. so big. Obviously living with you and seeing you every single day, one thing that's really missing is some of the micro expressions that make you you. I don't think that this is so much about you or people being themselves. I think it's more about communicating easier. Yeah, you do have to change your voice patterns around. And I know like for me, I have all these different, I'm, I'm not using my index controllers right now, but I have all of my face expressions perfectly set to each of my hands. So if I like point, that's when I'm angry or like a thumbs up means I'm happy. So I'm so used to having conversations in VR be completely based off of my hands. I bite my lip a lot when I'm like talking and I'm, I just kind of sit and like, <laughs> right. But you, know, you can't see those types of things or how I'm reacting or feeling. I have to literally puppet my avatar. It feels a lot more natural whenever, if something funny happens, you know, it can be like, ha 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 ha, I was so funny and laughed. Or if something like crazy happens and somebody's just like joking, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> One interesting thing was uh, I made my gesture, but I made the face that I would have made. I keep doing that too, where I'm like, I made the face with my face <laughs> what I've been used to with my gesture I've for like two years. I've been doing that too. It's so That's hard weird. to undo your brain. Looking at you right now, I think the craziest thing is seeing your eyes move around naturally the way that they would during a conversation. <laughs> it is bridging that gap of presence that you would normally not have in online communication. That eye contact is something that has been totally lacking. And so being able to sit at a table like across from each other and you can see when I'm looking you in the eyes, there is like this connection there. That's something you just cannot get unless both people have eye tracking. There's quite literally nothing like it in the world. Because even FaceTimes, there's an analog to where you're looking through a camera and it's not really like this direct point to point thing. If you want to look them in the eyes, you have to look at the camera, but then you're not looking at their face. So even right, in a yeah. video call, you're never looking like, like where do you're I never look? making eye contact. So we live together IRL. But we also play VR together very often, and that's how we originally met and stuff too, is in VR, in VR chat, and like in our avatars. And so it is kind of strange where I have these two versions of you in my head. Is I see your avatar girl persona, but with your IRL face expressions, and it adds a new dimension to, I don't know, your online character. It feels more like authentic.
Now before we keep going, I want to give a big shout out to today's video sponsor, SideQuest. SideQuest is well known for being the largest content platform for standalone VR slash MR games, literally thousands, including official store releases, app lab games, demos, experimental titles, game ports, and everything else you could imagine. But they also have their own social VR sandbox title called Banter. It's completely physics based, kind of like VR chat meets Bone Lab. And just for the release of this video, Banter is going to be giving out a free Quest 3 to a random player who's online at the time of the drawing, which is great because you don't even necessarily need SideQuest or VR to play. You can download it on Steam for desktop shenanigans as well. More details and of course links are in the description below. Shout out SideQuest, you guys are awesome, but let's get back to the video. You may be surprised to know that face and eye tracking aren't actually native to VR chat outside of simple gaze mechanics. It's not as simple as just putting on a face tracked headset and being good to go. You have to go through the process of actually setting up a community driven external open source software called VRCFT to get it to work with a compatible avatar. My name is Benicle James. I'm the creator of the app application known as VRC Face Tracking. VRChat in their quest to be as completely open-ended as possible, essentially left it to the user to, to figure out how to animate their avatar. But I think for new people, it's extremely daunting when, when you show them a page of you know, a list of parameters that we're using. But I personally like the fact that people have to learn how to use these things because I'm, I'm a really firm believer in, you know, show, don't tell. You might even enjoy it. And so, I mean, this has really been a learning process for me. It's been a learning process for everyone involved, but I mean, I wouldn't be where I am today without it. Outside just software limitations, the hardware limitations have been left in the hands of big corporations like HTC and Meta. It's extremely expensive to afford and rarely added considering the lack of software support and user demand. Current gen headsets like the Quest 3 and Big Screen Beyond have a distinct lack of support. Other headsets like the Vario Aero and Vive Pro Eye, both of which are no longer being manufactured, include eye tracking alone and require users to additionally purchase an HTC Vive facial tracker, which is also no longer being manufactured. Actually finding or creating avatars with face tracking is a battle of its own. Until now, the main demographic for consumer grade face tracking technology has been VTubers, for which Apple has been leading for a long time. ARKit was added to iPhones back in 2017, meaning if you create a model with their predetermined 52 face movements, the device can detect which expressions you're making and mirror them onto your avatar. They're clearly interested. These companies want to do something with it. Um, maybe the worry for them is it's only applicable in social VR, but I think that people are getting more excited as these companies kind of start to acknowledge the technology more. If, if they don't do it, we will. And that, that's the beauty of the open source community. You know, if, if a company doesn't want you to have it, we're getting it anyway, gosh darn it. VRC face tracking would not be here today if it weren't for just random people from the community coming over and saying, well, you know, perhaps you could be doing this a little differently. Perhaps, uh, you know, here's a couple new parameters that might be useful for a lot of avatar creators. Not many people have the knowledge on how to set up face tracking for an avatar, meaning most of the 3D models that you purchase, especially for VR chat, lack the blend shapes required, which is why creators like Echo can make their job off of this one singular skill. My name is Echo and I make face tracking prefabs. A lot of people who have made face tracking in the past are still, uh, they're doing face tracking for iPhones for VTubers, ARKit, and they uh, not a lot have switched over to doing ARKit and VR face tracking. Every face tracking headset has a certain set of faces that it can track you doing. For example, one headset may be able to track you moving your nose, while another headset won't be able to do that. Obviously, those of us with the means to obtain face tracking hardware and have the knowledge to set up an avatar for VR chat are really passionate about both the process and the results. The VRCFT Discord currently has over 8,000 members, with more people interested than ever before. Although it's quite the process with the high difficulty setup, the community has been extremely helpful in guiding new members through the process, attempting to teach the skills necessary to create the best tracking possible, because they love what it brings to their interactions with others. Literally, I open booth and I just see all the popular models. And I'm just like, I want to do that one. That one looks cool. When making commissions, it's a little bit easier. I have to cater it to just one person. So I can ask that one person for, how do you want this? How do you want that? But like some avatars like Rindo and uh, Celestia, ones that a lot of people use, have like just a flat mouth. 
And with that, I like to do more cartoony face, like more cartoony expressions. But with yours, it actually has like a full like facial structure. And because of that, I went with a more realistic approach for your model. Now, because the more popular VR headsets don't have face or eye tracking built in, this is where the hardware mods come into play. Specifically, the project Eye Track VR. Uh, hello, I am ProHertz. I'm the creator of Eye Track VR, and I make eye tracking for your face. So our eye tracking mod allows us to have eyes in VR chat, and we're also working on a dynamic foveated rendering mod to allow performance increases in games that support it. So right now, that requires you to buy your own cameras, your ESPs, which are what the boards we use to connect the cameras to that, and the LEDs that light up your eyes. And then you get three printed mounts and you sample it all together. Probably around $100 is the typical cost. And if you only do a single eye, you can probably get away with about $35. So right now, one eye is being tracked, and then I'm using VRChat's native eye tracking, and it's mirroring to both of my eyes. And so I have eyelid openness. I can just, I can kind of squint a little. I can open all the way and I can look side to side, up and down, all around. With the help of a lot of people and some time, we have iTrack VR. I use the Big Screen Beyond as my daily driver headset, which is still relatively new. It's an amazing piece of hardware, but the most prominent feature lacking that many people want would be for face and eye tracking compatibility. However, iTrack VR was noticed by Big Screen themselves and even featured on their YouTube channel, bringing attention to the mod as compatible with the headset for those with a DIY spirit. I originally wasn't going to get the Beyond because too expensive, whatever. One of their lead engineers uh, sent me a Beyond to just add eye tracking with and mod with. We are now kind of in a mutual state of trying to get out a good eye tracking kit for the Beyond. I think it's cool to note that like, it doesn't matter how old you are for stuff. Like I was 14 when I started eye track VR. There's, there's no limit to how old or, oh, I'm too old to do that. I'm too young to do that. Or I'm not smart enough. Like. There's, there's so much resources just to get going. ProHertz sent me a DIY set of my own, which I was supposed to feature in this video, but broke in the process. Sorry. Although what's most interesting to me about the tracking are the social implications, eye tracking is absolutely on track to be utilized in non-social scenarios as well. The Apple Vision Pro being a great example of the practical use casage. But there's still one thing missing with all of this, privacy. All of this stuff stays open. I think that's my main thing. I think when companies get their hands on this tech and they realize the, the impact that it can have on their ability to advertise is, is my main worry, right? You know, as a company, you're going you're gonna to take this tech and you're probably going to use it to make money. And while I understand that a company needs to make money, I think the tech needs to stay open for, for the good of for the people. You've seen Ready Player One. It could happen. You never know. It's a little scary to imagine what a company could do with your face and eye tracking data. Knowing exactly where you're looking, how long you're looking at it, what makes you excited, what grosses you out. Perhaps could a VR headset know you better than you do? Even now, companies are collecting this data anonymously, but currently there's not much to worry about because we're still so early in the life cycle. But I think that's what makes open source projects like VRCFT and iTrack VR so important. When we, the users, are the ones shaping and contributing to the future, making the experiences that set the standard, that shape this, where it goes and what it's used for. It's a very special responsibility, and I think out of everything, that's why I'm so passionate about it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I meant to post it way sooner, but I am actually getting surgery in about 12 hours after recording this. Hopefully to fix the health stuff that's making it hard to upload anyways. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and consider joining my Patreon to support the making of videos like these. Of course, shout out to my existing patrons, including virtual VIPs, Dutchman101, GM, NNN, Rai600, 33333, and Sally.